I don't normally play RS3, but a new skill has come out last Monday, Necromancy. Before starting old school, I did the Lynx Titan method, where I got 200 mil all in RS3 first to test the waters, and then moved on to OSRS to continue my XP journey. In 2016, there was 27 skills, and I got 5.4 bill XP and secured a rank 53 on the overall high scores. I had this rank until March 2020, when the next new skill was out, Archaeology. I was busy in OSRS at the time, so I had zero interest in trying to race for 200 mil, so I ended up going to complete it 1.5 years later after it was released, securing me a rank in the lower thousands. And now, with 3400 people with 200 mil all, the high scores is once again resetting. I haven't played Artist 3 in so many years, but I am committed to coming back to train this new skill to 200 mil as fast as I can. Of course, with the new skill, there are going to be quests as well. Necromancy actually came out with a new city dedicated to it, the City of Um, as well as 9 new quests that were ready on release. I'm currently going through the first one, which is introducing me to the skill. Necromancy is a combat style, so it's not like anything they've ever added before. There's the combat triangle, and instead of becoming the combat square, Necromancy is just kind of gonna be its own separate style. So it looks like we just got our weapon, the Death Guard. Let's go fuck shit up. I don't know anything about combats in this game. I haven't really trained them in 7 years. So we will be clicking whatever allows us to do damage and just hope it works. Here we go, already level 3 Necromancy. Only 199,999,826 XP to go. Let's go boys. It looks like to unlock new abilities I have to go here and spend talent points. So it looks like this will not become dead content as soon as I complete it after all. Perhaps now is a time where I wish I hadn't spacebar through the quest. Oh well, quest complete, let's go train. Legit zero idea of what to do or where to go, so I'm just walking around the city buying everything in the shops. I came across some tier 1 armor, so we should be good to just go mindlessly click some stuff now for XP. Packed up some overloads and made my way to a very common training spot, Lumbridge Cows. My idea is to do cows to just level up as much as we can while other people figure out the metas. And then we can move on and copy those metas while already leveled up. Lots of gains going on, already level 10. A lot of people say this style is kind of like summoning, but I think it's like a mixture of magic and melee. I need to be somewhat close by to use a few abilities, but I could definitely see why it looks like magic. You can also summon things like zombies to help, but that's no different than thralls in OSRS. I don't think it's anything like summoning. 9 minutes later, I'm hitting level 20, and I'm still using tier 1 weapons and armor. People are starting to learn how to craft better armor, and obviously because it's a new skill, nothing is going to be on the Grand Exchange yet, so we're going to go make some armor and weapons. We just did a quest without a quest guide or Slayer music and we learn how to smith and craft our own armor. In order to get our armor, we have to go in order from tier 1 to 10 to 20, etc. I can't just skip some tiers and go straight from tier 1 to 20. This forces everyone to do low level content, so I guess it's good in the sense that things aren't just going to be dead on release. The items used for upgrading are also untradeable and come from rituals. To perform rituals, we have to input items already in the game, and then it will output the item needed for necromancy. For example, right now we need cloths to upgrade the armor, so we input spider silk armor and perform the ritual. This seems pretty straightforward, and makes the skill pretty interesting rather than just camping one thing I suppose. After running to the GE and back 42 times, I finally got the stuff I needed to upgrade my armor to tier 20. Let's go play with it. I heard banshees were a great way to level up, but after hearing everyone in my stream tell me about them, it seemed like they were too crowded. I decided to wing it, and went to security stronghold to kill some stuff on the bottom floor. There was ghosts and skeletons, and I'm not gonna lie, they fucking hurt. I was drinking brews like crazy to stay alive, but I was still leveling up fast. I decided to camp these guys until level 40, because I got level 30 so fast, and I didn't want to leave to upgrade my gear every 5 minutes. I'm now level 41, and I'm too afraid to leave my spot, because I've heard that this spot is starting to be packed in every world as well. Once I leave, I won't have my own world anymore, and I'm pretty sure even with better gear, my XP rates will drop because I'll have to share with someone. So I'm going to stay here until level 50. 
Then we'll go upgrade our gear. Made my way back to Rituals to make some bars and cloths to upgrade my gear. It's now 4 hours after release and we're just a little over level 50. Compared to other people, we're training pretty slow so far. But also, we have no clue what we're doing, so that probably doesn't help. Looking back, I had no clue what was going on here, but there's these alteration glyphs that you can use to speed up certain things inside the ritual. For example, some types get more random events which give XP, while others might just make the ritual complete faster. The type that I should have been using at this time that I did not know about was the multiplier, which gives me multiple outputs instead of one. I spent an hour getting bars for my armor, and if I was getting 3 times more bars every output, I would have been able to leave 40 minutes ago. Every world was full everywhere, so I ended up going to my own personal Slayer dungeon, which is an instance area, to train for a bit. And honestly, I was just thinking about what the hell we're going to be doing for 99, let alone 187 mil XP after that. With every area being packed, things were starting to get demotivating. These skeletons were good, but I was only getting half the XP of the better spots. I stopped them at level 66 to go AFK Rituals again, because I figured I could train 66 to 70 there zero time, getting the stuff to make my level 70 gear. Level 70 armor was locked behind a quest. To get to that quest, we had to do a couple hours of rituals, so at this point we're just AFKing for a few hours not really knowing what's going on. A whole 14 hours after release, still zero breaks, we're finally level 70. We're about to make our level 70 gear, and level 70 is massive. For those who don't play RS3, the weapons and armor can have perks on them. However, the perks can only go on tier 70 plus. Of course, I was using my max level weapon up until now, but the armor I was using was tier 80 hybrid, that way I could already put my perks on it. But now that I have my tier 70 power armor and weapon, it's time to perk up. I'm trying out some abyssal demons. The idea with necromancy is to go to areas with a lot of NPCs in them, because necromancy heavily focuses on AoE attacks. This spot with the abyssal demons has like 14 of them, so as long as I don't die, it's pretty good. Looking at progress, it's 11pm, we're a little over level 70. And these were somewhat AFK, so while I had some time, I turned on the weather channel. It turns out there's a 0% chance we're sleeping tonight. We have a long 12 hours ahead of us. I'm about to get level 72, and these are like a consistent 450k an hour, but I'm seeing the methods that other people are doing, and I feel like I can get better. I'm going to start making my way towards things I've never killed before. I'm heading towards Abyssal Savages, new NPCs that were added with the 120 Slayer expansion. They're in the wilderness. And before you have a heart attack for me, I'm not risking anything. Understand that the wilderness in RS3 has the option to opt out of PvP. I did that, so we will not be getting PK by someone who wants my spade. Until I realize literally 2 seconds into here, how the fuck does anyone kill these things? They're absolutely ripping through me. Trying to eat over them just... I don't know, it wasn't enough. It's kind of demotivated me, but we're also on tier 70 while everyone else is tier 80. So maybe we can train at Abyssal Demons for just a little bit longer. A few hours later, here's level 80. Time to go upgrade again. I believe this is where we made our first really, really, really big mistake this race. Every time you upgrade your armor, you go to the blacksmith and tell him you want to upgrade. He gives you a task, and you complete that task, and then he teaches you how to do it. Now, the thing with tier 70 armor, tier 80 armor, and tier 90 armor, is there's two sets, the tank kind and the power kind. You're obviously supposed to do power because DPS is king, however, I selected tank without realizing it. So it's 3am, everyone's asleep mostly, I'm just kind of playing alone, and I have no one to spam questions to. I read the note he gave me assuming it'll be straightforward, and it is pretty straightforward. It says I have to charge a hammer at 4 God Wars dungeon altars, so logically, I probably have to kill all 4 bosses and then click the altar afterwards, right? So I did a couple quests, prepped some other random garbage, and once it was 6am, we made our way to General Garage Door and were ready to do the final part of this task. After killing him, I finished the minions and then went to the altar to use the hammer, and it did not work. I don't know why it didn't work, but it didn't work. I was confused, I start panicking, DMing everyone I know that has level 80 already, trying to figure out what the hell I did wrong. 
Everyone's talking memes about how level 80 is a brick wall, next is hard, blah blah blah. I don't really understand why, because the note clearly said the God Wars Dungeon 1 alters. But whatever, I've never done next, let's go try it. So I grab a couple friends, and we take nearly an hour to get a next kill because I'm so bad. I still have my hammer on me, lo and behold, once we finally get the kill, there's nothing to use it on there. I figured this anyway, but I was just so confused why nothing was working. I was pretty much ready to give up. Anyway, this is when it clicked on me. I chose the fucking tank armor, not the power armor. I then decided to try the God War bosses again, and the hammer immediately after, and of course, it works. For whatever reason my brain decided to kill the minions first on my first attempt 3 hours ago, it lost me a whole 3 hours. Very nice. I made my tier 80, and I was so excited to get back to Abyssal Savages with tier 80 weapons. The experience were about to fly. 6 hours. You don't realize how much can actually happen in 6 hours. Every single world at this point had 1-2 to two people on it. There was no such thing as an empty world. Everybody was competing for the same spot of the same NPC. I had zero chance of getting good rates here now. 80 to 90 was honestly such a hard grind. I couldn't seem to stay at one NPC that I was happy with. I was always moving around. I did learn at level 87 that there was another spot for savages, but even here I couldn't hold my own world for more than 30 minutes straight. I got my gear around 9am and it's now 7pm 10 hours later. I did have the luxury of napping for 3 hours, so it only took me 7 hours, but you should know that's still very far behind everybody else. With RS3 rates, this really should have taken only 4-5 to five hours maximum. Being so far behind everyone else, I was ranked 400 or so and still barely slept. I was getting demotivated. The combat was unironically too hard, and I was really counting on enjoying this more after level 90. And there it is, level 90. From here, we either love the rest of the skill, or we just pack it up and accept their defeat and go back to old school. And it looks like this game really wants me to finish 200 mil, because people have finally figured out how rituals work. Once these were figured out, not only were they good, but they were better XP per hour than combat. And not only were they better XP per hour than combat, but it was also more intensive and has the familiar skilling vibe that I love so much about RuneScape. You see, the rituals themselves are horrible XP, but the random events you get, kind of like forestry in OSRS, is where the XP comes from. At level 90, you can get your soul attraction above 500%, which then guarantees a random event every 12 seconds on the progress bar on the top of the screen. These random events give insane amounts of XP. At just level 90, I'm able to get 1.4 mil an hour. Every time I level up as well, I get more XP per random event. RS3 has an ability called Surge. This pushes your character 10 tiles in the direction it is facing. This means if I use this ability micro-efficiently, I can probably save a lot of ticks. There is a better ability called Dive, which lets you move however many tiles your cursor is away. Up to 10. In hindsight, I really should have gotten this because saving 1-2 to two ticks per lap when I'm doing as many laps per hour as I am, definitely would have been very efficient. But I didn't have the patience anymore, I didn't have the quest complete, and I just wanted a skill. We likely lost a lot of time without it, but in return, the remainder of my 190 mil XP here is going to be full of the best clicks I can do, along with minimal sleep. Take note of the timestamps. I got level 90 around 7.30pm. 7 hours later at 2.30am, 99 necromancy has been achieved. We got our max cape back, and now we only had 187 mil XP to go. We were ranked 280 to 99, meaning we are still very far behind everybody else. Especially because ideally we want to rank in the top 100. I didn't even have to turn on the weather channel, I just knew there was a 0% chance of sleep tonight. I apologize for all the interface changes, the RS3 client wasn't a static size the whole time, and I sometimes forgot to change my OBS after changing the size of the RS3 client. But here we are, 4pm on the third day. I still haven't slept more than 3 hours, but man, we are gaming. People figured out that you can use runes to cast some passive spells for an extra 300k an hour XP. On top of the 2 million an hour we were already getting, this is going to be great. 
the runes are somewhat expensive. I'm spending about 250 mil an hour. But you gotta do what you gotta do to get top 100. 58 hours after release, here we are hitting level 110. For the noobs who think XP stops at 99, this is 38 million XP. Give it up for day 4. I won't lie guys, we got weak here. My XP rates were tanking so I ended up just having to take a nap from 2am to 5am. I did set my alarm for 6am, but my cats knew I wanted 200 mil all, so they had the decency to be loud and wake me up one hour before my alarm. Bless them for that. Continuing the gains, here's level 114. It's been about 96 hours since release and we're just hitting level 118 or 85 mil XP. Are we in the top 25? Of course not. A lot of people already have level 120. Let's just keep going. Day 5, Friday morning at 10am. Last night, we tried to sleep 1 hour around 8pm, and it worked. We woke up 1 hour later and we were back gaming. Problem is, we underestimated our body in sleep. I couldn't keep my eyes open, so I ended up just going back to bed around 3am until 6am again. However, with that great rest, it was time for yet another big day of gains. Starting off with level 120 early in the morning. And I can't believe I didn't learn this until 110 mil XP, but there is a way to make the camera static so that things don't move. This made this method so much easier. Friday evening, when I was chilling at 120 mil XP, this is also when the rank 1, It's Dave, walked in the first 200 mil all since Necromancy. This guy went absolutely insane, he had a full 20 mil XP lead over rank 2 if I remember correctly. That's honestly just about everything that happens. The rest of 200 mil is nothing different than the last few minutes of the video. So just a small recap on my overall thoughts of the skill slash race. I think the competition was heavier than I ever could have imagined, and I'm sure others would agree. By Sunday night, there was 100 people with 200 mil. If we assume the skill was 120 hours long, that means 100 people played 120 hours within the first 7 days. RS3 skilling rates were kind of fun. I enjoyed being able to level up so fast, and the reason they are so fast is because the game is focused around endgame content and PVM, not so much skilling. Also, due to the fast XP rates, it opens the door for a lot of people to be able to compete, which in my opinion makes the hype for a new skill in the reach of 200 mil much more enjoyable. The actual training method itself with rituals in my opinion felt like a very runescape way of training. I enjoyed being able to micro a few things in order to get better rates, and I think it made the overall competition better for everybody who was good at it. The fact that this skill was also very cheap allowed just about anyone to compete as well. Coming up to nearly 200 mil on Sunday morning at 6am, right before we sleep eternally for a few days, here's our loot from the last week. We slept about 14 hours, maybe give or take 2 hours including the time to get up, as sometimes it was not easy. We spent maybe 10 bill, although a lot of it was excessive money such as buying tier 95 weapons because we panicked about combat becoming meta again. The method itself was very cheap. Our final rank after 200 mil was rank 49, just barely putting us on the second page. I'm very happy with this given I had zero artist 3 experience beforehand, and I just want to say thank you to everybody who joined the race and hung out with me in my stream during this grind, it was all a blast. While I was extremely happy with my artist 3 gains, now that it's over, until the next new skill comes out, we're going back to old school runescape. I will see you guys there in future videos, and I hope you all enjoyed watching the new skill release in Artist 3, even if you're not crazy about the game, because I know I had a blast. Don't forget to like the video if you did enjoy it, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.